I'm Phil Bond, and this is the legendary NES peripheral ROB, R-O-B, which stands for the Robotic Operating Buddy. He's a little robot with some limited movement who moves by responding to optical flashes that come from the television screen that he receives in his little eyes. He can only move up, down, left, right, and he can open and close his little hands. This is Rob with the Gyromite accessory set. Two gyros, which are essentially uh, heavier than you'd expect plastic tops with a metal point and a little handle that spins separately from the rest of the top. They sit on this holder, which has little pedestals that also spin. This is called the tray. It has two color-coded buttons, a blue one and a red one, that just go down this long stem arm to poke a standard NES controller on the A and the B buttons. This is the spinner. When you have this turned on and you set a top into it, it gets activated. And the top starts spinning up to speed. And it can get very loud. Sounding like a power sander or something. And then they can spin for as much as five minutes. Rob has his little claw tips on his hands. These let him grasp the handles of the gyros and move them around while they spin. You can see on the top of Rob's head that his red light is lit. That means that he has uh, interfaced with the TV already since he's been powered on and he can receive signals. 1P Game A. This is a simple platforming game. It's a lot like uh, Super Mario Brothers. You have your little character here, Professor Hector, who you'll recognize from menus in Tetris DS. He has to go through this maze, picking up dynamite, avoiding these little smicks, and using radishes to bait them away. While they're eating radishes, he's safe from them. And throughout these little puzzles, your goal is to collect every piece of dynamite and move through by moving these little pillars up and down. You can see that if something is pressed on the blue button on Rob's pedestal, the blue pillars go down. And when it's released, they go up. You manipulate the tops so that they depress those and you can move through the maze. Two players, basically the same thing. It's just sort of a, a Mario, Luigi, alternating style thing. Nonlinear digital editing. Click that. stack up accessory parts. Rob with all of his accessories attached. He has his five pedestals where his little blocks can rest on. He's got five different colored blocks which are made of an interesting material like someone took the molted plastic whipped it up into a froth so that there were air bubbles in it and then poured it into the molds. It makes them very light but they're still tough. Direct. Up here we have information on how many points you've earned and how many moves you've made, and how many moves it should take you to complete this level. In this level, it says that you should start with the blocks in this color order on this pedestal. These little squares represent the pedestals that sit around Rob. And over here, it shows that they want you to take the top of this stack and move it all the way over to this left pedestal. And you do that by hopping Professor Hector, same character from Gyromite, around on these little platforms. You don't just press up to move Rob up, you have to make Hector hop onto the up button on the screen. Which maybe you can hear makes a little voice sample come out. In memory mode, 
it's virtually the same game except where you have your start position and your end position you are asked to enter all of the commands for the entire movement from here to here in advance you select each little command by moving over to what kind you want then hopping on a button to input it there <laughs> Okay, now we're going to actually set Rob in motion. You'll notice we had to uh, tip his head up a little so that it was pointing exactly at the screen. Now, again, the only motions he is capable of are left. Holy shit, that's wrong. <laughs> yeah.